call this meeting of the Oldsmar City Council to order. It's September 22nd, 2021. Call it to order. And before we rise and uh, get to the invocation, just a couple of things that I'll mention tonight. Uh, for those of you who uh, are logging in to watch us be streamed live, well, guess what? You're not seeing us because <laughs> uh, we had a technical difficulty. And so uh, we learned of it today and we couldn't have it prepared in time. So we had to go back to old school uh, where we tape it and put it back online. And so just for all of you here in the audience, the council's already been warned, uh, we don't have audio. And so we have a camera over there that's recording it all. And so throw your voice that way, speak loud. Just don't be angry, okay? Uh, let me also point out that our uh, city attorney, Tom Trask, is not here with us uh, because it being a Wednesday meeting, it always tends to throw people's schedules off. But we have uh, Rob Eschenfelder. Did I get that right? Absolutely. All right. It's going to be a good night. <laughs> um, standing, in for, standing in for Tom, so we appreciate you being here. And you might notice that Council Member Siraki is not here tonight. Uh, once again, with the change of the schedule. For those of you who don't know, once a year we end up having to change our council meeting because by statute we're not allowed to have a council meeting on a night that the county is having their budget hearings. And so we automatically move it by one day and unfortunately it has an impact on some people's schedule. Okay. Um, would everybody please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance? And, and before uh, Rob starts uh, the invocation, who will lead the invocation in our, in our pledge, I'd ask that we have just a moment of prayer, uh, silence, and uh, think about, you know, there was an accident in Palm Harbor this morning, uh, fatality, and uh, there was a firefighter, uh, Ashley, who's a lieutenant, Ashley White, uh, who was hurt and in the hospital and underwent surgery today. So. Let's give her a, a moment of prayer from uh, the city of Oldsmar, okay? Thank you. Rob? Heavenly Father, as we gather in this place, may you prepare our hearts for the things that will be discussed. Help us to be a blessing in the way we speak and act. Let everything we discuss here be in alignment with the best interests of the people of the city of Oldsmar. May we speak with humility when presenting our ideas, help us to admit our mistakes, and be willing to act upon solutions presented to us by all. In this we pray. Amen. 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 to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. The next item on the agenda is the Citizens Open Forum. I'm going to start on this side of the room. Is there anybody who would like to address the City Council? We only have a couple of rules. One, we ask that we have a few rules. We ask one that you not speak longer than five minutes. We ask that you give your name and address and please include your uh, city. Uh, and the last is we ask you. If you're here to speak on items 9, 12, or 13, those are all public hearings, and you'll have an opportunity to speak to those items when we get to them on the agenda. So with that, is there anybody on this side of the room? Come on up, sir. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the, of the council and city staff. My name is Dale Henderson. I'm the general manager for Orion Waste Solutions, 12600 Automobile Boulevard in Clearwater, Florida. Just wanted to say just a couple a couple words tonight and kind of give a little bit of an update on the solid waste collection transition. Uh, as you know, Orion Waste Solutions will take over collection of solid waste and recycling in the city on October 1st. This evening, I'd like to introduce Dan Ansbach. Daniel was kind enough to bring in the bring up the shiny 25 cubic yard rear load Orion truck that we see parked out front, just as a sort of a static display to give you guys an idea of what our equipment will look like uh, as it begins collection on October 1st. Daniel is our operations manager. He's in charge of everything operational at the, uh, at the district. He has been very, very busy, he and his team, uh, preparing equipment, preparing trucks, delivering front load containers. Uh, you may have seen those containers around the city, uh, bright blue and shiny and new. 
Uh, so that's a coordinated effort of, of logistics to uh, work with the current provider. That, their container gets removed, our container gets uh, put in place. That effort is going very, very well. It's not a scientifically perfect um, exercise because you have two different companies, but Daniel uh, is working very well with the current provider and they're making those transitions uh, uh, very, very, very smoothly, very well. And we're also starting to deliver large roll-off containers, the 20, 30, and 40 cubic yard containers. So that's going well as those containers get full with the current provider, the current provider's pulling the containers out, and Orion, Orion is installing a brand new Orion roll-off container. Um, we've got a couple few steps just to give you an idea for personnel training. Our safety department worked with our new team members through the course of an entire week, last week, those guys and gals have been uh, training on trucks, providing uh, services to help uh, logo equipment, get, getting to know the city. Dan has them set up to start running uh, uh, routes basically in practice. Uh, beginning, I, I believe, tomorrow we're going to run the front loader, and then all through the first part of next week, the uh, rear load collection equipment, the automated side load collection equipment. Just so that the personnel get to know, you know, the lay of the land, the customers, the placement of containers, things like that, before we actually start collection. On the first day of collection, of course, uh, our team will be here uh, in force. Uh, Dan and I will be on, you know, boots on the ground as always, uh, making sure everything goes uh, go, goes very very well. And certainly there'll be some phone calls, and we'll handle all of those issues, right? We'll handle anything and answer questions. I spent the other uh, last week Saturday, we were at uh, Gull Air. I, I was able to uh, speak to the residents of Bel Air, answered their questions, made a, made a presentation, enjoyed their company for probably a, a half hour, 45 minutes. So that was very nice. So we've been spending a lot of time in the community, trying to get to know, you know customers, listening to their questions, uh, listening to their suggestions. And so far, the transition's been going very, very well. So uh, just wanted to kind of give an update. Wanted to bring the truck by. Wanted to introduce Daniel and uh, tell you that we've got a team that's hard at work preparing for our kickoff, which we are, again, very humbled and very proud to do on October 1st. Excellent, excellent. Well, we appreciate you coming out and giving us an update. Absolutely. I know Daniel was out in the parking lot offering uh, ride-alongs to all the council members. <laughs> so I uh, signed up the vice mayor. Very, 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 very so the, gracious. And the absentee member, too. And then, yeah. Shiraki is going next. <laughs> so, uh, Again, thank you so much, and uh, have a good rest of the meeting. All right, thank, thank you. you. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Nice Do we have anybody else on this side of the room? Come on up, sir. All right. Greetings, City Council. Can you speak kind of loud? Greetings, City Council. Uh, I'm, I'm Dallas Rose, 600 Buckingham Avenue West, uh, Old Mark. I've been 32 years in Old Mark. Uh, I'm uh, here tonight representing uh, Orange Blossom Estates and the uh, Driftwood Cove area they're over on the west side of the school okay. uh, I, I built it in Oldsmall because it was a quiet centrally located small town uh, 32 years ago now there's no quiet over our neighborhood as airlines are blazing over our homes uh, they, they blaze they fly over our houses day and, and then late into the evening well after 11 o'clock uh, I was here a couple months ago and a uh, one of the other uh, residents was here uh, her name was Estrella Lastra. She addressed you guys, and uh, then I spoke a little bit. I had several neighbors here in the audience also that night. Uh, we're all a little bit disturbed by this. Um, St. Pete Clearwater Airport relocated the Legion flight path over our Oldsmar in 2016. We have been forced to listen to the flyover disturbance now occurring day and, la and late into the evening, well after 11 o'clock and sometimes later flights, 1.30 and 3.30 a.m. Uh, we are also awakened quite often in very early dawn and pre-dawn early uh, flights. Uh, PIE attended the city council meetings in 2004 and 2007. Uh, some of the city council members may recall that. Uh, they presented, did a presentation. Uh, Director Largo, Lagos discussed the airport history and possible future growth and would not predict the future impact on Oldsmar. At the 2007 meeting, Deputy Director Jewsbury direct, discussed the noise study and the establishment of the noise abatement task force. There were no details on the meeting minutes from said noise study that I, I saw. I have the meeting minutes. I researched it. 
Jewsbury stated that our recording were complaints and providing them to the task force, and then nothing occurs. We've been dealing with this for four years now, my wife and I and with our neighbors. We've been going to the meetings, and they just record them and discuss them, and then nothing happens. We have gotten some relief. Uh, they say they raised the flight path, and the, the, the pilots are trying to abide by the noise abatement procedures. But I still hear several of them blazing over if they're late or whatever. Um, we noticed the increased flyover traffic in 2016. The Allegiant jets were low, loud, frequent, and often late into the evening. We contacted the airport to inquire what is happening and listed the complaint. The airport operations supervisor, Steve Santa Maria, responded with the email providing the flyover specifics. He later telephoned us after our request and told us the flight path is now over Oldsmar Homes in accordance with the former UPS flight path. We were also told that, that to get any relief, we would need to enlist our neighbors and complain. So that was the beginning of our complaint campaign, which we've been doing now for four years, over four years. We continued as well as our neighbors to complain with no action nor solutions from PIE. We also began working with Linda Norris, uh, on the PIE Noise Abatement Task Force, we attended one Noise ab Abatement Task Force meeting uh, before the pandemic hit uh, with Linda on, 20, on January 15th of 2020. Uh, Mark Sprague, the Deputy Director, listened to our request and was suggesting to move the flight path over the Tarpon Outfall Canal. Uh, we suggested moving the flight path west of Old Mark over the commercial right of way of Forest Lakes Boulevard. It's a commercial area. It's only a half a mile west of where they're flying now. Mr. Jewsbury, uh, let's see, uh, yes, uh, we, we would keep the path further away from Safety Harbor that way, not over the Tarpon Canal. We're trying to be fair. We don't, we're not going to kick the can back. We're not, we're not trying to kick the can around here. Uh, what, what happened to us? Safety Harbor kicked it over to us. Now we're being, we're having to deal with it. And I don't think it's fair. It's, Totally unfair. Uh, this is Mr. Jewsbury immediately stopped Mark from any other further discussion for this relocation. He, he commented, and Mark just immediately stopped uh, trying to uh, suggest, make suggestions. This was documented in the meeting minutes with Jewsbury commenting that a small change in the flight path would make no difference. It would make no difference to him, but it would make every bit of difference to us. It's, it's a huge difference, a half a mile. It's, it's, it's huge. It seems clear that PIE did not care much about the flight path over Oldsmar. Our continued complaints were only recorded with no solutions. PIE has told us they raised the flight path and are rescheduling flights within the voluntary quiet window, so flights are not after 11 o'clock. And that's a total joke. Several, I had two flights this week. I'm going to have to try to wrap up because oh. it just... Yeah, I'll have to continue this time. Yeah. Anyway, um, nothing's occurred here. Of what I'm going, where, where I'm going here. Andrew and I, I would like to help Andrew any I can to resolve some solutions. I'll wrap it up here. We would like the PIE to relocate the flight path over Forest Lake Boulevard. And we need the city involvement to help us with this solution. It's only going to get worse. The flight, the uh, airport's growing, they're booking more flights, and they're not, in, in, they're, they're not changing their schedule. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not yeah. happening. It's, they're well after 11 o'clock. Yeah. All right. Um, Thank you for taking the time to come up because I know it's a concern that a lot of our citizens have. I mean, personally, where I live, yeah. I'm dealing with it too. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's not fair to us. Yeah. I don't, Andrew, I don't know if you have anything to. I, I can comment a little bit because uh, I've had, been able to attend, I think it's two meetings now, well, 10 call in virtually. Yeah. Um, so I think there's some. There's some you know, fallout there from not being able to meet in person and kind of start to press for harder questions exactly. or, or get one-on-one -on -one FaceTime with individuals down there. Um, in the very first meeting I think I attended, they had had a big presentation about Metroplex, I think was the term that they used uh, as far as kind of the desired centralized mean flight path for approaches and departures from both directions. And they had just updated it and they had uh, explanation was it was like a six or seven year process through the FAA. So it's, I mean, it's, so it's gonna, a big deal to yeah, get so, through that. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. suggest, I'm going to cut you off. Okay. I'm going to suggest that maybe uh, based on your 
understanding where they're at, being meeting again, and so on and so forth. But maybe we add it as an agenda item, and uh, you know, pass some kind of you know motion uh, showing support for it to be moved officially from the council. I don't, I don't know the impact it will have, but it's certainly not going to hurt it if it's an official, uh, you know, approved motion from the council. Uh, you know, but uh, I know it's a problem. It's been a problem for quite some time. We noticed the difference right away. So anyhow, thank you for coming up. And thank we'll you. see where we can go with that. Thank you. All right. Do we have anybody else on this side of the room? Go ahead. <clears throat> Just popped in to introduce myself. My name is Pam Aromala, 37 Emerald Bay Drive, Oldsboro. I've uh, been a resident for 21 years of Oldsboro. Recently retired, and I was appointed last month as an alternate member of the Leisure Services Advisory Board. My entire career was elder services, uh, starting in activities and, and moving on through the state uh, of Florida. So I'm looking forward to try to help enhance elder services, elder programming related to leisure services. Looking well, we to appreciate you taking the time to come up That's great. Uh, because you couldn't be at the last meeting, but you got appointed. <laughs> so uh, anybody have any questions? Well, didn't have to dance. At the last meeting. They did have to dance. Did they talk oh, about that? You got see, that's you, you've been that's appointed, so I don't know. It's, the, it's officially you don't have to do it anymore. No, see? She's yeah. got videos on TikTok. That's very good. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank, you very, thank you very much for coming, and thank you for serving our, our thank seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw the hand behind you. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Same. Um, I was the other part that got um, added to the board, so we are so excited to be part. Uh, my name is Tatiana Cox Lopez. I live in 1709 High Biscuit Circle North. I've been living in Osmar for the past 10 years. Uh, this is my daughter, Anali. She wanted to say hi as well because she hi. she loves getting involved. So this is the future of our city, yes. and um, I'm just very glad to be part of um, this little bit. We couldn't make it last time. So. Well, well, thank you for coming out. Right now. We do appreciate it, yes. and uh, we look forward to uh, your service on the board. Thank We're great. excited to work for the City of Osmar. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else on this side of the room? Okay, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the citizens open forum. Next item on the agenda is the community minute, which will be announced by our city clerk, Ann Dixon. Huh, couldn't stop the clock. <laughs> 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 the financial sustainability series is free to attend. Register at sustainableoldsmart.com. We have two of them coming up. The first one, Saturday, September 25th. From 9.30 to 10.30 at Tupa Hall, it's also virtual or in person, is grocery shopping on a budget. And then number the second one is Thursday, September 30th, from 6 to 7 at night, State, State Street Center, that's virtual, retirement planning, strategies for today and tomorrow. We have movie in the park, free to watch Disney's Toy Story, Friday, October 1st, 7 to 9 p.m. at Ariel's Park. And Toy Story will go on and on and on. So then that's the series that will be here in the fall for the Women's in the Park, right? Lots of toys, lots of stories. Paula Palooza, free to attend. Partnership with Humane Society of Pinellas, dog friendly event, features on site adoptions, shows, contests, and food trucks. Saturday, October 9th from 10 to 4, Ari Olds Park. Rumor has it there might be a kissing booth there. Oh. Oh. That, that's perfect yeah. during a pandemic. <laughs> 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 I know. Are we have waivers. And so, yeah, I just want to say, go dog go. Go dog go. Go dog go. Favorite Dr. Seuss. Go dog go. All right. Well, thank you. Next item on the agenda is approval of addition of new agenda items. We have items one and ten. Uh, does anyone wish to pull anything? Okay. Discuss either one of those. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So I have a motion. We have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second discussion. Sent to your ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. Next item on the agenda: recognition of Florida Green Building Coalition highest scoring government certificate certification since 2020. It's a new agenda item, and I believe. This is pretty exciting. Yeah. I think uh, Nan Bennett, our Director of Public Works, is going to be leading us off. Yes. So, um, 
As you're all aware, in the fall of 2020, the city recertified for the green local government certification um, through the Florida Green Building Coalition. And we were, we've held a silver level certification since 2013, but in that recertification, we were elevated to a gold level certification. Excellent. Um, as a result of some extensive documentation of our sustainable programs and practices. So this certification demonstrates Oldsmar's commitment to protecting and conserving our natural resources, enhancing the efficiency of our government, thus saving the taxpayers money, um, and raising public awareness of the benefits of environmental stewardship. Um, so in addition to the regular certification, FG, FGBC, I want to get the initials right, uh, also annually has an achievement award and the city of Oldsmar is recognized as the highest scoring local government for the year 2020. Wow. Uh, despite having to cancel their annual awards ceremony, um, they did send this lovely and sustainable uh, <laughs> award, <laughs> and it reads, highest scoring local, uh, uh, it reads, city of Oldsmar was recognized as the high, highest scoring local government for the year 2020. And so I'm going to present this award to Ashley Painter, our sustainability coordinator, because it was her work in documenting all of the sustainable practices of the city and the council that earned us the recognition for gold level and for this award. So thank you very much for your hard work. Great job. I will say it really was an entire city effort, though I did put it all together. Together, it did touch every single department in the city. So it really was like the whole city working together to get this award. That's excellent work. I also understand, if I'm not mistaken, that while we got the highest score for 2020, that was it the third highest score ever? ever? In, in the state. In the yeah, state. Ever. So only two other cities uh, have ever scored higher. That's outstanding. Yeah. Outstanding. I mean, Wow. Yeah. 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 We just have to beat those other two next time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know one of them's our neighbor, right? Stay yeah. <laughs> yeah. over there. Yeah. We won't say. We're not. Yeah. Yeah. Put them off. Yeah. Were you doing mask or no mask? No mask. Council want to get it in real quick? Sure. Kind of a big deal. There, I could say that of the multiple sustainability coordinators we've had, actually has absolutely blown them all away. <clears throat> she is absolutely the reason we're here. That's why I gave her the council manager award. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you guys. Congratulations. Good work. work. Finding less time? Sustainability <laughs> this time? I'll tell you what, award winning city right here. At the next item on the agenda is the Community Redevelopment Agency. We have nothing under that tonight, so I'll move on to the consent docket, which will be announced by our city clerk, Ann Nixon. Item number two, approve minutes of the August 3rd, 2021 council meeting. Item number three, approve minutes of the August 17th, 2021 council meeting. Item number four, approve minutes of the September 7th, 2021 council meeting. And item number five, approve payment to legal counsel for August 2021 legal services. Is there anybody who wishes to pull anything from the consent docket? Did anybody want to comment on the 33 pages of minutes? <laughs> <laughs> a lot you. of work. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to personally take responsibility for at least eight of those single space size 10 point font pages. Um, <laughs> although I did compare and yours were equal to mine, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. You know, thank you to Kathy and Ann and the clerk's office for these minutes. There were a lot of folks there who wanted to know exactly what was said, folks who weren't there who wanted to know what happened, and you guys did an incredible job. Thank you very much for constantly documenting and being transparent with the processes of our city. Yeah, you know, September 7th, I think there were like seven pages. Something. It was four. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, anybody else? All right, uh, nobody wishes to pull anything. Chair, I'll obtain a motion to approve. So I have a motion, I have a second. second. I have a motion, a second. Any other discussion? Sensing you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Next item on the agenda, City of Oldsmar, item number six. 
uh, LMS annual report, our local mitigation strategy, and is it Tatiana? Tatiana, who's given this? No, or, I, I'm, Al. Oh, Mayor, I'm just going to summarize uh, kind of the report, and uh, Tatiana, as always, is doing the legwork. In the packet, you'll find both the cover memo and our summary of accomplishments and goals and objectives, which are pretty lengthy, but I know you all reviewed them. Just wanted for the public to kind of outline what it is. The local mitigation strategy is part of a FEMA program related to the National Flood Insurance Program, which most of you are familiar with. And for us specifically, it's because we participate in the community rating system, which translates into a discount on your flood insurance. It's certainly something we want to encourage. The city has participated in the CRS is the way we know it. Um, that program since 1992, and it's a point system that rewards communities for floodplain management activities that exceed the minimum national flood insurance program standards, thus reducing flood insurance premiums for its citizens. Oldsmar is currently a class six community, which translates into a 20% reduction in flood insurance premiums for properties within the special flood hazard area, and a 10% reduction for properties outside the SFHA. The actual list of accomplishments, as you can see, is very lengthy, uh, goals and objectives. It also includes the capital improvement budget, the capital improvement program, which uh, I didn't include in the packet item, but it is available for review. You all have seen it, you all approved it. So the way this works is in order to receive credit for a CRS activity, this one specifically is known as CRS Activity 510, the floodplain management planning, each municipality must create and maintain their own floodplain management plan or participate in the multi-jurisdictional plan. In our case, the LMS was developed cooperatively with representatives from Pinellas County and its 24 municipalities, therefore qualifying for the credit as a multi-jurisdictional floodplain management plan under the NFIP's Community Rating System or CRS, uh, CRS program. Activity 510, Floodplain Management Planning. The LMS is a unified, coordinated effort to develop local initiatives to mitigate for future property damage and possible loss of life from severe storms and flooding. LMS participants, including city staff, meet regularly to discuss the LMS, update and revise the goals, and prioritize local projects to include the LMS document, such as major drainage improvement projects, hardening of public structures, emergency operations center purchases, and educational outreach programs to the community. Portions of the LMS are annually updated with mitigation project accomplishments or new projects to be added. Additionally, every five years, the entire LMS goes through a major update with annual changes, membership, goals and objectives, municipal programs, potential funding sources, critical facilities. The most recent five-year LMS update was adopted by this city council on September 3rd, year 2020. To continue receiving the credit under the CRS Activity 510, for the LMS, an annual progress report must be submitted as part of the required documentation during the annual recertification process. This memo and its attachments are the City of Oldsmar's 2021 LMS progress report and is available for distribution or will be made to be distributed to Tampa Bay area media and for availability to the public at Oldsmar City Hall, which is at 100 State Street West, as well as the notice posted on the city's website and social media. I mentioned before the capital improvement plan is part of that, uh, it's considered part of this annual report, and we're presenting it simply asking council to accept the report as presented. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion to accept the report as presented. So moved. I have a motion, a second. second. Motion, second. Any discussion? There's so much in there. There's a lot in there. I could have kind of, a question, I probably should have done that before the motion, but it, and it probably would have been fair if I asked this question beforehand, but I know one of the services, one of the action items that we have in the plan is investigating uh, flooding issues. I was curious, do we have a, or is there a system that we utilize that benchmarks what we find and that we track it so when we check it again in the future, we have something to compare it to? You don't really have to go to the microphone. Okay. Okay. You can stand there. Come on. <laughs> it's not there. That traditionally is handled by the public works uh, department and, and typically the city engineer. Um, I don't believe we have anything that benchmarks it. Uh, flood events, like rain events, are so variable 
that to benchmark it against anything. We do document every time we go out and, and make recommendations or, or help people on private property. We help with recommendations. If it's in public property, obviously we try to resolve the problem. But um, benchmarking is a challenge. I was trying to think how you would do that and I don't have a clear understanding how that would be done. Yeah, I don't know that it's possible to do, but uh, I was curious about it while I was reading it because I know in our sustainability plan, uh, we have some some potential of uh, rehabilitating drainage fields. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious as to, because I, I candidly, I, I'm not, I know what it means, but I don't know how that occurs uh, from a physical standpoint. So it just made me wonder is there a way that we have a prob problematic area, we choose that as a place to uh, do rehabilitation, and then we have some kind of sense of the impact, the return on investment. After I believe it was Irma that impacted us so greatly, mm -hmm. um, we documented photographically, like the high water levels and things like that, to try to use that against what the projection for that type of a storm coming in that path and stuff like that. The, dip, the trouble is, is that storms are not uniform. Sure. Where they occur, the <laughs> amount of rain, occur, the amount of wind, yeah. what, what the tide is at the time that it happens, that type of thing. So, but but we do document every drainage complaint we get, and and we do try to address each one, with either looking for like you know what we can do with the CIP if it's on public properties, or how we can help somebody with ideas and recommendations on private property to alleviate the drainage and get that out to the public right away. All right, All right thank you. Anybody else have anything else? Just one quick question. Dr. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, potentially for Tatiana, because I remember Tatiana, you presented to us um, the changes that we made uh, for, for example, the, the breakaway walls for certain properties, depending on where they were located within the Limwa and that, that whole very detailed presentation that you gave us. And you mentioned that it might, um, by doing that, we might receive a, a change in our rating, uh, currently uh, class six, to further reduce um, insurance levels, all that kind of stuff, and give, give our residents credit. Is that encompassed within this current report, or could that potentially have an impact next time around? So the changes to the rating, CRS rating, can only happen during your recertification cycle, not the yearly CRS, which happens in May, but you have five years. So every five years, the ISO brings in here and they do a detailed um, update and only during the five year, um, which will be for Ultimar in 2023, um, when we can apply for the additional insurance. Right. To approve your rating is a massive undertaking. That would be one component. But we're Thank preparing you. for it, so yeah. that yeah. effort was in order for us to maybe qualify in 2023 for that. Um, Thank you, Tatiana. Excellent. Any other questions? I, I, Go ahead, Black Bear. Um, this is kind of piggybacking a little bit in terms of that um, class level certification. I, I just circle back later in comments, but I had Leadership Pinellas Day today, and something I learned was that I believe it's for unincorporated county they're at level three. And I don't know if that's because most of unincorporated is more inland. So I was kind of curious, is there a ceiling that we can guess at as what is realistically attainable for any additional? Yeah, yes, but it's not a three. <laughs> so I kind of figured. <laughs> it's it's because of the combination of topography uh -huh. and resources. Okay. I mean, if we ever get to a three, it'll be the greatest thing in the world. We'd love to, but it, you're generally fighting to keep what you have. Mm -hmm. If you improve by one, you it's Herculean. It's so, I mean, it might be a great long-term goal, but I think the, the ability for the resources they have, and they don't have the need because they don't have as much flood mitigation mm -hmm. has to be done. I would That's imagine it. that most of the coastal communities are in the same That's situation right. yeah. that we are. But yeah. If you have anything? I do. All right, attention, you're ready to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, presentation of fiscal year 2020 dash 2021 business assistance partnership agreement annual report from the upper tampa bay chamber of commerce let's see we got the chair and the president here who's going to be given the all right please I introduce yourself gentlemen i'm jason sanders chairman of the upper tampa bay chamber of commerce with mark howe current president of the upper tampa bay chamber of commerce so one one state street right there you go the there you so, go um 
<clears throat> so yeah, thanks for letting us present today and give you an idea of <clears throat> how loud I have to speak while I'm up here. Yep. So, okay, good, sorry. So uh, to present this to you, um, I, you should have received a packet also, so I appreciate that they were able to hand those out. Um, just wanted to give you an overview kind of of this year's activities that we did that uh, contribute to the PAP agreement that we have. Um, this year, the two main things that uh, we always provide is a uh, in-kind membership to the chamber at our trustee level. Um, we also assign a business assistant specialist uh, to work with you and uh, the businesses during that year. Um, uh, that's Doug Beavis uh, for us currently, as you know. Um, so you can think of him as kind of like your concierge to anything business and government that we can help you with, with that. So he's always available to you. Um, as far as our leadership initiatives go, we host monthly economic development and governmental affairs meetings. Um, we tend a variety of economic development initiative meetings monthly and quarterly uh, this year. Uh, we've worked with the Tampa Bay Partnership to develop a talent pipeline for the region um, in Oldsmar and in maybe, well, mostly all Pinellas County, we start bringing Pasco at the end. So uh, with them, we were able to bring in some talent pipeline into that. Um, for the support of our local businesses throughout the year, we worked with several businesses this year to help them grow and remain within Oldsmar. Um, that was the main uh, thing that we had some people, we obviously were losing some businesses or maybe losing some businesses this year, um, to growth as well as, as anything COVID related. Um, in that with uh, the COVID, because of COVID, we provided a lot of education and support for all the businesses this year. Um, there were, uh, help them to navigate mandates, as a lot of small businesses don't have the resources to know everything that's going on and how to handle them. So we're continually doing that. Uh, we helped with the PP loans and their forgiveness when they came through, walking them through the paperwork, sitting down with them, hooking them up with the right people in order to get those uh, loans and, and get them forgiven. Um, same thing with the CARES Fund and many other things, the restaurant revitalization, um, anything that we could do with that, we were bringing businesses in to help with those things. Uh, we also, uh, this year, there was a gap funding program available through Pinellas County, which we were involved in, which we uh, made, uh, brought to the community and brought to businesses, let them know what that is. Um, we actually had a few successes with that as well. Uh, still an ongoing program, so we'll continue to try to use that too and fit that in wherever we can bringing some of that penny for Pinellas money and some of that money from the county back into Oldsmar, back into our business group. Um, other notable endeavors besides that that we did, um, we were identifying all year and coordinating the City Business of the Quarter Awards. Uh, we held two job fairs, uh, conducted 21 businesses uh, business tours with our Weeby Business Program. Uh, we have facilitated 18 ribbon cuttings, hosted 44 lunch and learns, uh, coordinated Chamber TV, the Mayor's Breakfast, uh, the candidate forums, star grants for the Oldsmar schools uh, through our education foundation. Uh, we do property needs reporting, the Invest Oldsmar initiative that we did, and then providing this report to let you know what we've done throughout the year. Very good, very good. Does anybody have any questions? Just being up here for the first time, and I knew the, of the chamber, of course, but going through all of it, I was like, wow, that is a whole bunch. I've never been privy to the report before. So thank you for everything you guys do here. It, absolutely. It, this was something that was very eye-opening for me. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, I'll tell you one of the things that uh, really impressed me in 2020 is that portion, and, and moving into this time, as we all know, the impact of the pandemic to our local businesses, especially those that had to close, be it temporarily or reduce the size, the restaurants, and that type of stuff. It was interesting, and the city staff worked on this extensively in terms of the outreach and educating our businesses, but the chamber did as well. It was a, it was a really coordinated effort in terms of one, two, and, and it, it, when the CARE loans posted from the county, right? Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, there were uh, small loans that uh, were grants, really, that were given to uh, local businesses to help offset the loss of uh, rent uh, uh, through the county. And the county then later essentially did the whole pinhole map uh, where you could see who actually got those loans. And when you looked at some communities, it was pretty sparse. When you looked at Oldsmar, you could tell the work that had been done. And, uh, and that had a huge impact with a lot of businesses, you know, so in any event. All right. Uh, Danny, did you have something? 
I was going to say that I was saving most of my comments for item number 14, but I really do appreciate this report. It succinctly puts together the, I mean, really the highlights, because there's so many more things, but these are really big highlights. One of my favorite sections was attachment five, where you talked about the different companies that are going to stay in Oldsma. That's huge. That's huge. Finding Sunbelt staffing a place at Nielsen where they can stay in Oldsma. That's huge. Bagshaw, the pin company, I mean, Edmund Optics, I mean, these are not, you know, small potatoes. These are big companies. Sunbelt Staffing is a larger part of a nationwide recruiting company. I mean, Nielsen, huge. Edmund Optics. I and mean, we're talking about the, the industry that keeps us afloat when the housing market bubble bursts. You know, these are the companies that we want to stay. To yep. stay and feel very comfortable here, and I think they get a lot of support from the chamber. Thank you for the report. Very thorough. Thank you for the report. Does this require uh, action to accept the report? Okay, and then I'm, thank you, gentlemen. If there's uh, nothing else at this time, the chair is going to entertain a motion to suspend the rules of the day, so I can move to item 14. I think you were going to do this. So. <laughs> do I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Since you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Next item on the agenda, to item 14, which will be presented by our city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Item 14 is consideration for the fiscal year 21-22 business assistance partnership agreement with the Upper Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce. Come on down. <laughs> the current business assistance partnership agreement with the UTBRCFC Incorporated, or as we know them, the Chamber, commenced on October 1st, 2020, and will expire on September 30th, 2021. This agenda item proposes to enter into a similar agreement with the Chamber for a period of one year beginning October 1st, 2021. The purpose of this agreement is to provide Chamber support for the City of Oldsmar's economic development efforts through the provision of specific services that enhance the business recruitment and retention efforts of the City of Oldsmar. Through this agreement, the Chamber provides enhanced services such as coordinating we mean business visits, stakeholder educational forums, and general assistance in the implementation of various economic strategies. Agreement funding is in the 21-22 operating budget in the amount of $15,000 within the Planning and Redevelopment Department of the General Fund and staff recommends enthusiastically approval. All right, the Chair will entertain a motion to approve. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any additional discussion? Well, I am not. So this is how you got eight minutes on those uh, eight pages on those minutes. <laughs> I have valuable things to say. I, you know, a lot of a lot of residents don't understand why the chamber and the city work hand in hand. I'm, I'm just teasing. And I, th I know. And I, I think it's really important that people understand that you know our bang for our buck, at, so to speak, for the city for fifteen thousand dollars. The co-branding we get on the events that they put on alone is, is worth it. I mean, when I was out just recently at, at, at Second Friday, I mean, from the first time we held it to the rained out time to, the, to this third one, it was unbelievable the number of people who were there, you know, and, and they're driving this economic development in the downtown, and it's so important to me. I just, I just really want folks to... You know, take a look at this report. I hope it's digitally available not only on our website, but also on your website that we just um, went through. Because I want people to really understand the economic impact on local business that, the, that this chamber has had. And you guys have really set the bar high, and you just keep, you just keep beating it every year. COVID and 2020 helped me understand more clearly than ever before how important it is to have this partnership. Because you guys helped, along with the mayor, I know personally, reached out to all of our businesses to make sure everybody had what they needed. And we're continuing to do that. And, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of great things to come out of COVID. But the, the, the thicker connection we have with our local businesses because of the Chamber's efforts during COVID is a silver lining. It really was a silver lining. Because I feel like the additional Zoom meetings you guys have now, and the trustee lunch, and having things broadcast more public, more visible, I think it's fantastic. I think that was a big silver lining to come out of COVID, if there is any. I agree. For local I agree. Anybody else have anything Thank to add? Mayor, just yes, 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 Mayor. Um, just circling back with that retention and recruitment thing, I think it's it's really impressive 
what was done, and I'm sure that's still going to be a pressing issue moving forward as more of the last little bits of vacant land are starting to be developed or on the horizon of being developed. So I think the businesses that are here or potentially interested in coming here are going to be hard-pressed to find a spot pretty soon, which is it's a good thing for those that have already found a home here. So sure. we're really excited about that. Customer, do you have anything to add? Great job by the chamber, yeah. as always. Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Nice work. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to return to the rules of the day. I have a motion. I have a second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Sensing you're ready to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Next item on the agenda <coughs> is item number eight, presentation of Douglas Road Projects. City Manager. Sir, um, I'd like to introduce to you a slightly banged up city engineer, what? Daniel Simpson, who's going to present an upgrade or an update on the Douglas Road project, and I'll let him explain the banged up part. Good evening, and Daniel Simpson, he said, I was recently reminded today how important it is to have a safe road network for <laughs> those in a car accident at 4 o'clock today. Oh, but wow. okay. Still made it here. But if it doesn't go well, it's the excuse. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you help. Yeah. Okay. Ooh. All right, we're going to have a touchy. fun. It's touchy. It's touchy. One of these guys again. Bring okay. Back. There we go. So I wanted to give an overview of kind of the Douglas projects generally because there's some, it can be a little confusing because we tend to get grants and then we're trying to fit the project in and then we split them into phases and it can get confusing. So the overall goals of the Douglas Road projects is to improve mobility for all users, improve drainage, improve safety, and improve aesthetics. So I'm going to kind of go through the projects as they are kind of chronologically. So first we uh, worked on Burbank Road <laughs> extension and that was finished in the last few days. Then the Oldsmark Trail Phase 6 is from Racetrack Road to Stevens Road, which extends into Brooker Creek. Uh, that was bid, and we hope to award today, given if it's a pleasure to the council. Then Douglas Road Phase 1, which will include the trail and all of the road, <coughs> which is from co uh, Commerce to Stevens, and then Phase two of Douglas Road, which is the road with roadway portion on the right side or the, or the southern side of the roadway. And then there's a Douglas drainage project, which is budgeted in, in a few years. And that's if needed. We've had problems where at the corner of Burbank and Douglas, and we may, if we can't fix them with these projects, we may need to do some extra work in there. Okay, so the proposed schedule, um, the Burbank Road extension, uh, it, it, construction began in 2020 and it's completed just now. When did, when did, the, when did the project actually start? <laughs> uh, I'm not blaming us. I know. Sure. I'm sorry. I couldn't help. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I think it was a while ago. Well, for our trail phase six, uh, the, the design was complete in June 2021. The construction will hopefully begin, it will begin in fall if we continue on. Um, in the spring 2022, as we expect to be complete with the construction, um, that's supposed to be a six month project. Douglas Road phase one, we hope to have the design finished in the winter, uh, this coming winter. Um, construction began in spring of 2022, and that should be about a year project, maybe a little more. And it's, I'm not sure yet. Phase two of the crowd of Douglas Road, um, basically another year, and then the uh, drainage project in following year. Um, so each project has grants, which you may be more familiar with because that's that's more you know what, what we look at. <laughs> um, but they can be as confusing as anything. So the first one was the Burbank Road Extension with a $1.5 million state appropriation. The Trail Phase 6 was a federal LAP grant, which is a local agency program grant. It's distributed through the Federal Highway Administration. 
Um, and then the Douglas Road Phase One, we had the one million dollar state appropriation, and then the following year we got the Douglas Road Phase Two, one point five million dollar state appropriation. And for the East Drainage Project, we don't currently have a grant, but we, if we're doing that project, we'll pursue swift, a swift mud grant. So this was kind of a before picture of Burbank, um, and this is what we look have now. So we have the 10 foot sidewalk on the west side and then the roadway. We did um, stormwater improvements, sanitary sewer. Um, there was some utility work, sidewalk on the right side and a fairly extensive CSX crossing that <laughs> a lot of work. So the trail, this is kind of what we look at now. And this project is limited to where the grass meets the road on the um, north side of the road, sorry, the left side of the screen. Um, so this is a typical section. I know those can be kind of hard to gather, but basically it's a, between a 10 and eight foot sidewalk and a, there's eight foot trail where you will pinch down near the intersections, but it'll be generally be a 10 foot trail, um, asphalt with concrete header curb. So this is the Douglas Road project for phase one. This is kind of the before. Um, and then this is the typical section. We have a lot going on here, but if you go from well, on the screen left to right, um, we'll have existing, there's a ditch. We're gonna fill in that ditch with and put a trail on top. And then there'll be a uh, sod and curb area. The drainage will go in between the road and the sidewalk trail. Then we'll have extend the lane to be th three lanes now with the middle lane, turn lane, and then curb and gutter on both sides. Well, we're showing curb on one side, gutter on the other. And um, we're, we're gonna have somewhat limited what we're gonna do on the south side, but there'll be drainage improvements and work on the south side because we're trying to minimize the cost of the, in the, how much poles you have to move and stuff. We have, we have only 60 feet of right away, so it's, there's a lot going on in that small amount of space. So this is Douglas Road. Oh, on the Douglas Road project, we needed to um, work to extend the stormwater because when you have additional impervious, since we're adding a lane, we need more stormwater treatment for both water quality and attenuation. So currently there's a tower lake that um, we used to call it Sea Lake. Mm -hmm. And that green box is showing the area that needs to be redirected to the pond. So we're working to expand the pond. And by right now there was an area that used to have a tower for the cell phones. Uh -huh. And that's been removed. We're gonna try to remove that area that should give us enough volume treatment for the road. <coughs> But we're negotiating that with Crown Castle. I think that might be my last slide. Um, I usually have a, like questions. It, it goes to questions. Okay, so very good. Any questions? Questions. Yes. Council Member Dan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for any of the phases or portions moving forward, do we ever have to work with CSX again? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. Hopefully not. No, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, there's a there's railroad that goes across the Douglas Road, but it's the Duke Energy uh, easement, easement, and that's been the it's yeah. been disconnected, so there yeah. really is no value to them anymore. Okay, so there's not a portion that they're going to have to. We don't have to close anything else close, or yeah. open anything else. Right. That was the biggest right. challenge of that. No, we just need to deal with them with maintenance from now on. Hopefully. Okay. Vice Mayor? Got it. Thank I, you. I've got a question um, as far as the trail project goes, and I think I may have brought this up at a prior meeting. Um, the southern portion of Stevens, I do not believe, has any sidewalk. It kind of terminates at where it transitions from Stevens to Burger Creek. So is that something that will, I know it's not probably part of the tra trail project itself, but is that somewhat going to be planned in as far as connecting that so that there is mobility there? I think you and I talked about that. We'll certainly look at it. I don't think it's there now, but right. I agree with your assessment. 
we'll have to take a look at it. It's not part of this, okay. the current time. And then as far as like that's phase six, is there anything, I think it wasn't part of the presentation, like what's next as far as the trail goes? Any ideas there? Meaning anywhere or just Well, or is that, you know, is there anything? That might be the most logical next place to look. But we've pretty much, I think, you, you remember the reason why we did this as a trail. So I don't know that we have a whole lot else on our future projects you know, we, for more trail. We don't have anything budgeted in this five year, six year, but partially because I'm just trying to get all these mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I think we'll talk with leisure services about where the next opportunity is. Right. And then one final thing. So the, the trail phase is only for one portion relative to a longer length of Douglas. Will the remaining portion of Douglas that isn't trailed get, be getting any sidewalk right now or not? Not part of the original phase. When it's the phase, then yes. When right. you said he's combined the, the roadway project on the Douglas side is both trail and roadway. Okay. This is the start. That would be phase one. Mm -hmm. And then the finish will be phase one of the Doug, of the road. Okay. road. Okay. It, it was more, it was a coordination of funding and a coordination of the projects that we did run into each other kind of thing. But. Gotcha. Yeah. So the, the trail, the second, like we'll say phase seven of the trail, it won't be called that because that'll just get even more things in there. <laughs> will be included in the Part Douglas road. road phase yeah. one. Can you go back to that picture with the boxes again? Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, phase two. Yeah, yeah. phase one Douglas road includes that. Includes it's phase two, step six. Part <laughs> 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 eight. One, one other question then, in, in terms of just the condition of Douglas right now, is it kind of a case by case basis of any patching that will be done until the actual road work gets? As far as the road itself, current conditions? Yeah. You have some suggestions? Right? <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. some areas that will be on my way to work. Give us whatever. <laughs> yeah, we've got plenty of those. But but Trying to address those out. as they come, and it, we are putting band aids on it. Yeah, it would have been the next road we paved this and year if we, we weren't planning the project. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Council Member Gray, or anything? I just appreciate the update. One of my neighbors um, was being pretty vocal about it. He's got a business on Douglas Road, um, <laughs> so I was trying to find out as much information about it so I could address it with him. Um, and so this actually helps me out a great deal, at least in terms of anticipated time frame. So thanks for putting it together, Dan. And sorry about the car accident. I hope you'll be okay. Yeah, I'm glad you it, yeah. it was in a city truck, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have so a question for you, Daniel. Um, can you, do you have like an estimate on the uh, negotiations with Crown Castle? You mean like cost? No, more like timing wise, you think, before we have those completed? Well, they're interested in the design. Um, basically, they're, they are um, amicable, if you will, to the like idea, but they're, they, their biggest concern is that their infrastructure is protected. So as long as we can continue to convince them of that, they should be fine with it. So we don't have a like deal in place, but they, they didn't see any red flags as long as we continue to work with them. Okay. Um, first off, I know this project has been massive. You know, we joke about the phase one, part two, and all the other stuff, I mean, but clearly why we've gone through this opportunity to improve, which is probably the most industrialized used road in the city is that road right there. Mm -hmm. And so while we go and visit um, manufacturers and, and talk to them, we hear about it all the time. And so I will also point out, just for our citizens' benefit, when we saw the, um, the amount of grants that we've been able to get, and also uh, appropriations from the state, which our, our member of the House and our senator, state senator, have a big role in that. Um, uh, we also are still investing a lot of side-by-side -side money within the capital improvement budget. So it's not that the money's all coming from the state or, or something like that. Uh, we're making a big investment in it because it's important. And it's certainly, uh, that area back in there has a tremendous number of jobs. And as uh, Council Member Gannon pointed out, it's one of the balancing parts of our, uh, of our budget. So anyhow, uh, great job. 
the accident did not affect your presentation. Um, <laughs> hopefully the car is surviving, car surviving. The car, yeah, it's, it, it's, I mean, it has some work. You probably didn't even get hit by a car, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I just needed a good joke. Mm -hmm. Right. It was all right. It was the right Any way. other questions? No. Nope. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. This, this item does not require any action. Next item on the agenda is the city attorney. Item number nine, <laughs> hold here. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, you may recall that your ordinance review committee made some recommendations regarding uh, revision to Chapter 22. Uh, Y'all discussed that at your uh, March 21 work session, and uh, the ordinance that uh, title that I'm about to read for first reading is uh, resulting from that. And so with that, I'll go ahead and read the title. It's Ordinance 2021-27. An ordinance of the city of Oldsmar, Florida, amending section 22-2 of chapter 22, elections of the code of ordinances to change the procedure for filling a candidate vacancy between the end of the qualifying period and the election so that it is the same procedure for filling a vacant council seat as set forth in the city chart and providing for an effective date of this ordinance. Mayor. Excellent. All right. Um, uh, city manager, any remarks? Yes, sir. We have any presentation from staff? Yes, sir. There's no applicant. So at this time, the chair will open up the uh, public hearing. Is there honor? anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So, I have second. a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. If you all remember, this is something that we had a consensus on during our lengthy workshop. So, with that, uh, send your vote. Roll call, please. Councilmember Gerber? Yes. Vice Mayor Neal? Yes. Councilmember Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. First reading of Ordinance 2021-27, amending Chapter 22 of the Code of Ordinances, passes with four votes for and zero against. Excellent. Rob, anything else? You did an amazing job standing up. I, I have to tell you, Tom just goes on and on and on. <laughs> Should we share that with me? <laughs> All right, next item on the agenda is city manager, item number 10. Thank you, Mayor. Item number 10 is the request for council to adopt resolution 2021 20, the budget revision for fiscal year 2020 2021, generally known as our year end budget revision. Um, we're choosing to um, try and seek council approval for it a little earlier than we normally do because of a subsequent item on the agenda where our policy is that we require that we put our funds in place for any capital projects. And um, as you'll see, we're asking council to approve the first phase of construction for the Douglas Road project tonight. And the bids came in a little higher than we had budgeted, so we needed to make provisions for that. I'd like to read the resolution. Attached is the resolution revising the annual budget, as I mentioned, general fund, capital improvement fund, and the water sewer operating fund require adjustment at this time. Resolution 2021-20 is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, revising the budget for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2020, and ending September 30, 2021, authorizing the City Manager and the Director of Administrative Services to revise the existing budget. Mayor, that concludes the reading of Resolution 2021-20. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for staff? No, at this time the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Do we get any wire transfers yet? Um, I, I meant to mention this before, but I can see my uh, administrative services people are very excited because we are committing to the budget with the assumption that we will get the money before September 30, and we got the money today. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So now we all went yay, and they all went phew. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Collective relief coming from uh, finance. All right, since you're ready to vote, all in favor of the city saying aye. aye. All opposed, motion passes. Item number 11, please. Okay, Mayor, thank you. Item 11 is request council to award the aforementioned bid, which is known as 2021-002-ITB, to PCS Civil Incorporated for the construction of Oldsmar Trail Phase 6, as Daniel just made a presentation on, from Stevens Avenue to Racetrack Road on FPN number 4157387-58-01 for an amount not to exceed $1,491,159.97. The 
The Ellsmore Trail Phase 6 project will construct an asphalt mixed-use trail on the north side of Douglas Road from Stevens Avenue, Brooker Creek Boulevard to Racetrack Road. To facilitate the construction of the trail, the ditches on the north side of the road will be replaced with culverts, and some city utilities will need to be relocated to facilitate this work. Additionally, the contractor will install signs and traffic markings, as well as signal adjustments at Racetrack Road. The project is expected to begin in November with substantial completion six months after the city issues a notice to proceed. The total contract time is 210 days. The majority of this project is funded through a Federal Highway Administration Transportation Alternative Local Agency Program Grant. FHWA provided $40,000 to assist with the funding of the design. FHWA has agreed to pay $1,087,419 for construction and $81,556 for professional services and construction engineering inspection. LAP grants, as Daniel also presented earlier, are administered by the Florida Department of Transportation. The trail design was completed by Cardno in 2021. After review of the city's plans, specs, and contract documents, FDOT issued a notice to proceed with advertisement on June 26, 2021. On July 9, 2021, the city advertised for construction bids. July 20th of 2021, City Council approved the contract with Stanley Consultants Incorporated for construction engineering and inspection services to monitor the project. And on August 31st, 2021, the city received and opened three bids for PCS Civil Incorporated, Kaminga and Rudaboots Incorporated, and Tim Group Stucco Incorporated, DBA doing business as Tim Group Building and General Contractors. After valuation, all bidders were deemed responsive and responsible, and PCS Civil Incorporated was the lowest responsive bidder. FDOT concurs with the awards of the project. $1,229,832.97 will be funded in the Capital Improvement Project, and $261,327 will be funded in the Water and Sewer Fund for project-related utility relocations. This award is contingent upon City Council authorizing the additional funding in appropriations, which you just did for this project in the Budget Revision, as presented in AIR, AIR 1603. Again, as I said, you just approved that. Staff recommends approval, and off we go. Chair, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Move. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Let's keep yeah. going. Yeah. Since you're ready to vote, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Item number 12, which is a public hearing. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Item 12 is the public hearing to adopt resolution 2021-18, establishing a millage rate of 4.05 mills for fiscal year 2021-22. On July 20th of this year, 2021, the City Council authorized the City Manager to complete the certification of taxable value, indicating a proposed millage rate of 4.05 mills to the property appraiser. In August, the Pinellas County property appraiser mailed the truth and millage notices to all property owners advising them of the City's proposed millage rate for the upcoming fiscal year. The proposed millage rate is equal to the previous year, which was also 4.05. 05 mills. Florida statutes requires a separate vote by the City Council for adoption of a millage rate and a budget. The first public hearing adopting the tentative millage rate was held on Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. A second and final hearing is required to adopt a millage rate, which we're having tonight, and as the Mayor mentioned before, the meeting is not on our normal date because we're not allowed to conflict with any public hearing related to the budget for either the Pinellas County School Board or Pinellas County. Uh, I need to read the resolution in its entirety. Resolution 2021-18, a resolution of the City of Ellsmore, Florida, setting the millage levy for the City of Ellsmore for the year beginning October 1, 2021, and ending September 30, 2022. Whereas the City Council of the City of Ellsmore, Florida, has reviewed the proposed appropriations for the City of Ellsmore for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2021, and ending September 30, 2022, and whereas, in accordance with law, the Pinellas County Property Appraiser has certified to the City of Oldsmar a rolled back millage rate of 3.9680 mills, and whereas the proposed millage rate is greater than the rolled back rate by 2.07%, now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, in session duly and regularly assembled as follows. Section 1, that the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, hereby sets the millage rate for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2021 and ending September 30th, 2022 at 4.05 mills. Section two, that this resolution shall become effective 
Immediately upon adoption, Mayor, that completes the reading of Resolution 2021-18. Thank you. We have any presentation from staff? Any further presentations? No, sir. Okay, no applicant. This time, the chair will open uh, the public hearing. Is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. This time, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. I'll move. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion. Second. Any discussion? Kept it down another year. Yep. Awesome. Kept it where it is. It's good. All right, roll call, please. Council Member Graver. Yes. Vice Mayor Nan. Yes. Council Member Gannon. Yes. Mayor Seidel. Yes. Resolution 2021-18, establishing a millage rate of 4.05 mills for fiscal year 2021-22, <coughs> is adopted with four votes for and zero against. Excellent. Item 13. Thank you, Mayor. Item 13 is also a public hearing. This one to adopt Resolution 2021-19, establishing the budget for fiscal year 21-22. A little background, the proposed budget was presented to City Council on, on Friday, July 16th, 2021. The budget work session was held on August 16th, 2021. Florida statutes requires a separate vote by the City Council for adoption of the millage rate and the budget. The first public hearing adopting the tentative budget was held on Tuesday, September 7th, 2021. The second and final hearing is required to adopt the final budget for fiscal year 21-22. I need to read the resolution in its entirety. Resolution 2021-19, a resolution of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, adopting the budget appropriations for the City of Oldsmar for the year beginning October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2022. Whereas the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, has reviewed the proposed appropriations for the City of Oldsmar for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2022, and now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, in session duly and regularly assembled, as follows. Section 1. That the City Council of the City of Oldsmar, Florida, does hereby establish the appropriations for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2021, and ending September 30th, 2022, as follows. General Fund, $15,664,350. Public Safety Impact Fund, $185,000. Parkland Dedication Fund, $130,500. The Multimodal Impact Fund, $25,500. Community Redevelopment Agency Fund, $1,484,595. Debt Service of Veterans Memorial Park, $169,460. Debt Service for Harbor Palms, $316,980. The Capital Improvement Fund, $4,995,000, the Water and Sewer Operating Fund, $15,897,400, the Water and Sewer Impact Fund, $942,500, the Stormwater Utility Fund, $4,400,400, Solid Waste Fund, $2,993,500, the total budget appropriations, $47,205,100, $85. Section 2, that all purchase orders for materials and services that remain open at year-end for fiscal year 2021 are to become supplemental appropriations in the respective departmental accounts in the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2022, unless canceled. Section 3, that this resolution shall become effective immediately upon adoption. Mayor, that concludes the reading of Resolution 2021-19. Are there any further presentations from staff? No, sir. We have no applicant at this time. The chair will entertain. At this time, the chair will open hearing. the public hearing. Is there anybody uh, in the public who wishes to speak on this side? Seeing there are none, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. At this time, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Discussion? Last budget ever. Oh, for Al, yeah. Is there a tear? Is there a little tear? Not a one. <laughs> oh, no. I know now, our retiring, of course, means that uh, this is his last. Uh, you love reading budget. those resolutions in your retirement. Yeah. All the numbers. He's a finance guy at heart, I'll tell you. All right, any other uh, any questions and comments? No. All right, sent to get ready to vote. Roll call, please. Council Member Graver? Yes. Vice Mayor Nett? Yes. Council Member Gannon? Yes. Mayor Seidel? Yes. Resolution 2021-19, establishing a budget for fiscal year 2021-22 is adopted with four votes for and zero against. We got a budget. All right. Item 15. Thank you, Mayor. Item 15 is the council consideration for, of a simple adjustment for building, remodeling, and architecture of the former Applebee's neighborhood grove. The background is that the Land Development Code, 
Section 3.3.11 states that any modifications, variation, or adjustment of a stamped approved site development plan shall require approval of a site development plan amendment as either a major amendment, minor amendment, or simple adjustment, which represents this one. The applicant's request of modification has been determined to be a simple adjustment. The request must be submitted to the Planning and Redevelopment Department for review and action, which it has been, and the Planning and Redevelopment Director recommends approval of a simple adjustment and updated building architecture and Ms. Childress is here to make a presentation. Outstanding. You Hello. have the floor. Tatiana Childress, City of Old North Planning and Redevelopment Director. Yell. Yell. <laughs> <Tell you yell. laughs> so this is a request for a simple adjustment to an approved site plan and a conceptual building architecture approval for an existing 5,383 um, 5, square foot restaurant building and a proposed expanded 748 square foot covered patio located at uh, 4016 Tampa Road in the Town Center Commercial Residential Zoning District. Uh, per a land development uh, section 3.3.11, any modifications, variations, or adjustments of the stamped approved site plan um, shall require uh, um, approval and uh, be uh, either regarded as a minor amendment, major amendment, or a simple adjustment. So this one was found to be a simple adjustment because it does not include any increase in impervious surface area, um, insignificant increase in floor area ratio, and no change to vehicular use area circulation. Um, also provide adequate parking supply. Because this uh, particular site is located within the town center and also located along Tampa Road corridor, the council, um, it requires from the council action to approve the building architecture and the building upgrade. Um, so the site is located at 4016 um, Tampa Road, a former Applebee's restaurant. The zoning, current zoning is TCCR, town center commercial residential. Future lane use um, is a community redevelopment uh, district. Existing site is approximately 0.88 acres. Existing restaurant building is 5,383 square foot, and existing patio is 400 square, uh, square foot. Um, proposed site includes um, the unchanged building, which is going to be upgraded to proposed 748 um, covered patio in this area, upgraded building architecture, 58 parking spaces. Um, the restaurant requires 10 parking spaces per thousand foot of square foot um, of the building uh, gross floor area, and the CRA provides 10% bonus reduction. The total spaces required for this site uh, would be then 55 spaces, and the applicant is providing 58 uh, spaces. The patio modifications include removal of the existing 462 square foot patio, relocation of the accessible parking spaces, removal of total of six parking spaces, and relocation of the two accessible parking spaces. Also, rerouting of the site, existing sidewall. Uh, the proposed building architecture includes traditional building uh, with two primary muted building colors and accent brick and trim materials as shown on these um, graphics. Um, we also have the building detailed building elevations from all sides. And based on the above discussion, the planning and development staff recommends approval of the simple adjustment and upgraded building architecture is presented. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Seeing none, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. This is going to be great. It's really going to be good. Yeah, really cool. I think it's uh, nothing against Applebee's, but I, it's, it's a definite <laughs> upgrade, though, for sure. Mr. Mayor, I'm here representing Bath Hospitality, so if there's any questions on it. I mean, it's our second location. I think you visited our Wiregrass location. We're excited. Our biggest job is to de-identify de this building so it doesn't look like Applebee's. <laughs> um, and as you can see, we have great intentions to really improve and, it. And, and uh, the assistant city manager and I went up there uh, when before they had signed the lease just to kind of do an intro to the, the city a little bit. And uh, we were able to sample a little bit of the food. Uh -huh. uh, and it was really good. <laughs> so, so we got, uh, it'll be a real good winner, and I can see a bunch of golf carts parked there all the way. Yeah. All right, sensing you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. And welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice job. Excited to be here. Item 16. Thanks, Tatiana. Thank Item 16, request council approval for the special event application fee waiver request 
for the Oldsmar Friends of the Arts presentation of Shrek Jr. to be held on October 23rd, 2021. The Oldsmar Friends of the Arts was formed as a 501c3 nonprofit organization in October of 2020 with the goal of enhancing the performing arts in Oldsmar. As a nonprofit, the organization provides support by hosting various fundraisers over the course of the year and utilizing those funds to pay for production costs such as the rental of sound and lighting equipment and scripts for shows performed by the city's OPAL, which is known as the Oldsmar Performing Arts League Theater Program. On October 23rd, 2021, the Oldsmar Friends of the Arts will present the musical performance of Shrek Jr. on the Elizabeth Skinner Amphitheater stage in Harvey Oates Park. This free presentation will be the culmination of over four months of practice leading up to the two on-stage rehearsals and the final performance. This item requests the waiver of fees in the amount of $1,090. In accordance with the City of Oldsmar's Special Event Guide, the above organization is requesting that the City waive the fees associated with this event. It is anticipated that the performance will bring over 600 people to the park to see the show. A copy of the application is attached for your review. Staff recommends approval. All right, I just tell the chair I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Second. Yeah, it's going to be great. They've been promoting it every second Friday. They've got their <laughs> online um, fundraiser going on right now where you can donate oh, right. um, yeah. on the Suda's uh, website on uh, Facebook. It's, I'm excited for the kids. Yeah, the kids are working hard. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. There is a great meeting. Yeah. Great meeting. Yeah, Shrek yeah. is awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Guest cameo. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> since you're ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. <laughs> Motion passes. City manager, you got anything else for us? No, sir. City Thank clerk. You. Nope. Just like that. Item yes. number 17, council comments. I'll start with council member Graber. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just wanted to say uh, October's filling up. Not only do we have the Shrek musical, Shrek Junior musical, um, the Chamber's putting on an event, the Jack Willie's the Cornhole Tournament, um, and the spaces for that are starting to fill up. Oktoberfest is coming back. Um, on the happenings, Chip, Sunset Sounds, movie in the park. It's just going to be a really exciting time, especially the weather starts to cool off a little bit, so I'm excited about that. We do have some upcoming meetings as long as there are agenda items. And what I mean by that is sometimes board meetings get canceled because there's nothing to talk about. So, um, but Veterans Advisory Board, um, that's Monday, the, September 27th at four. Code Enforcement Board, October 7th at four. Planning Board, October 13th at 6.30. All the meetings are here. Um, other than that, Mayor, that's all I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. Got to remember again. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple of quick things I um, wanted to bring up. The um, accident, as you mentioned this morning, the Palm Harbor Fire Rescue Lieutenant who was injured, uh, and I'm sure a lot of people saw the photographs, but also the engine, the actual fire engine was completely, the front end of it was obliterated. It was awful. Um, and the, the number of lives that that touched um, from the individual who was in the vehicle that collided with the engine who died at the scene, the people that they were attempting to assist and there for the call in the first place uh, were affected. And of course, this lieutenant, her team, you know, their families, it, it reminded me that, you know, the folks over at 54 and their colleagues over in Palm Harbor, you know, every time they get a call, you know, of course, we're trying to protect them from cancer with their equipment. We're trying to protect them from heat damage. Well, I was struck this morning when I saw that article uh, at the danger posed by simply other vehicles on the road. You know, move over, slow down. Uh, there's a lot of people coming back from up north. Um, you know, take your time. I know we're all in a rush to get somewhere, but that really struck me. Uh, that really bothered me to see that, and I praying for her family. I know they already have a little GoFundMe page for her recovery for her children. It's just really devastating. Um, in a similar vein, uh, had a kind of scary Friday. Um, I'm sorry, Sunday. Got my days all mixed up because we're here on Wednesday. Um, Sunday, uh, all of a sudden uh, over on Lafayette where I live in the downtown area here, there was Pinellas County Sheriff's Office uh, helicopters overhead, um, deputies in, in uh, vehicles at every intersection in the downtown area, it seemed. 
um, canine patrols everywhere. It was very frightening. Um, everybody was basically exchanging information on Facebook, you know, lock your doors. There's a burglary in progress, and it was actually five doors down uh, from my house. Uh, the perpetrator, which I understand they have not yet caught, uh, used a brick to smash a window to then enter a house and uh, maybe take a shower and eat some potato chips. I'm not entirely sure, but the family came home from church to find us. And, you know, I, I am so grateful for the constant comfort we have here in the city of, you know, very low crime rates. You know, we've got deputies who are there instantaneously when something happens. Gosh, I remember at Old Bar days, they showed up in golf carts immediately um, from the parade when we had an event back then. But, you know, lock your doors, be extra vigilant. You know, we're coming toward the holidays, um, scary stuff, and kind of be there for your neighbors. You know, look out for each other. Um, and I just wanted to thank uh, Chip and the team in Leisure Services for putting up a lot of events on the agenda here. I hope it does not rain. I already thank the Chamber for an awesome event with the Jeeps. I do not envy you, Mayor, in having to select a winner from among the entrance into the vehicle, <laughs> the vehicle display, uh, the car show vehicle display. There's a lawyer for you. Anyway, um, thank you so much, uh, and that's all I have. Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, today's first Leadership Pinellas Program Day, so we get to get on the bus, which I know you didn't get too much of that last year. But I didn't, but I still got to see you this morning. Yeah, so um, it was exciting. We got, we got to, it was History Day, so we went around to Whedon Preserve, the Don Cesar, Heritage Village, and we finished up at the County Courthouse in Clearwater. So. That was a fun day. I'm looking forward to future program days. Um, I got an email from Sandy Grimes uh, on behalf of the chamber earlier this week pertaining to the beverage tent for Oktoberfest for our oh. city shift. Ready to welcome serve, to, right? What, ready to serve. Well, welcome to be a vice mayor. Yes. <laughs> you and Siraki. So, um, <laughs> that she has us tentatively slated for Saturday uh, the 23rd from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. So I will uh, send a follow-up email just to kind of use that as a means to ensure we get enough people there that day. Uh, so just want to put that out there now. Uh, and then one final thing, I wanted to say a, a big thanks to Leisure Services and I'm sure other parts of the city staff who were able to get the spray park back open. Yeah. I think it was a real big hit that first day. Um, that was part of the reason I did not go to first or second Friday because we closed down the spray park. We were there <laughs> the whole time. Um, and since then have been back with some friends with other young kids um, from outside of the city and they were like, wow, this is amazing. Um, we actually had the park to ourselves for a little while, which was kind of fun. And I, I don't think that'll last long for as the word gets out that it's back open. So really excited about that. Um, I think it's a great asset to be back in operational status for the city. So. Big thanks. That's all I have. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, that was fun getting out there. And yeah. Katie getting in there and trying to slide. <laughs> she yes. was a trooper. <laughs> she was a trooper. Hey, I've got a couple of items that I want to touch on. One, I want to thank ABC Action News uh, and uh, uh, Miss Mrs. Ramos. Uh, you know, little Miss Olsmar, the last little Miss Olsmar. But uh, she lives here, and she was the producer who helped put all of that welcome. Good morning, Oldsmar, on that ABC did for us. And uh, all the staff members who were involved in it. I wish we could have gotten, the only thing I would like to have a little more control, we could have involved more of the council members on it, but that wasn't really our call. Um, but they covered everything. I mean, they, they covered so many different aspects of the city and created some really good content uh, that we'll be able to use and put together to help promote the city, especially when you have a business looking and they start their cursory view of, gee, where should we go to? Now you have all these current uh, different videos done and they covered everything from, uh, you know, the Opal uh, dancers and the arts we do here to what's going on with the BMX track and our efforts for downtown and our parks and on and on and on. And so I just wanted to make a, a point of thanking them for putting uh, that kind of effort in. 
and including our city and thank our staff for participating in that. It was an early morning roll call for everybody that day. <laughs> when they say five o'clock, they're not kidding. They want you there early. So but we all did well and, and uh, I just appreciate the effort. Uh, next item I wanted to talk about and, and uh, Katie touched on it. So for those of you who may or may not be aware, uh, the, the Chamber's second Friday that they do, which is growing and growing, uh, there's a car show. And one of the awards, and it's sponsored by uh, Express Oil uh, Change and Tire Center, which is over here on Tampa Road. They, they sponsor the show, uh, Jason. And uh, one of the awards is the Mayor's Choice Award. And so I got to thinking about it. And I have officially requested, and they have officially accepted my request, and that award is being changed to the Mayor Slash Council Choice Award. Uh -huh. So that what I'm going to propose is that uh, I'm going to take turns appointing people uh, so they can go and do the judging part. And it, it, it's right, it's a little bit of work. We went from 25 vehicles. 150. <laughs> the Jeep showed up in force. Yes. I, I was totally unprepared for that. <laughs> I uh, was thinking, you know, I promised my wife we'd go out and hang around. And <laughs> they came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, Mayor, you got to judge 150 cars. Like, Honey, I'll see you later. Uh, but in any event, it's still fun. And, you, you know, you present the award that night. And I think it'd be nice to involve everybody in it. Yep. And so if you guys are up for that, yeah, yeah, good, you. good. All right. And they agreed to it. Uh, and uh, I don't think I had anything to do with my choices either because I picked some pretty good cars. <laughs> Does <laughs> your daughter have a Jeep? She used to have a Jeep. She didn't have a Jeep anymore. Um, glad you mentioned Oktoberfest, up and coming. We'll be here before you know it. And the last thing I have is that I uh, would love to congratulate the Rays who officially made it into the playoffs right, right about the time we started our meeting tonight. Yay! So, um, go race. Go race. And that's all I got. Next item on the agenda, so approve the tentative. Could I? Absolutely. Right at this. Um, I, I'd like to say this on behalf of the fire chief, and it relates to the accident on 19. Um, I'm guilty of this as anybody, I, so I suspect it's a common frustration, but it always annoys me when we're in a semi-traffic jam to see that fire trucks or emergency service vehicles block what looks like five lanes when they need two. Right. And Jason made a point this morning at our staff meeting to suggest that we should now appreciate that mm -hmm. because Lieutenant White would probably be dead if they didn't do that. You saw the effect on the truck, oh but the truck in essence probably saved, saved her life. life. Yeah. So I, I know personally, the next time I'm inconvenienced by thinking mm -hmm. the emergency vehicles are expanding lanes when it doesn't look like they need to, I'm going to think about that. And I, Jason, I think would appreciate us mentioning that to the public. Yeah, and you know, here's the thing. I, I spoke to, to some of them over there today, and uh, it's close to home. Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, we, 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 you know, we're concerned about all first responders, but that that's really close to home. So. So let's hope and pray all surgeries go well, and uh, you know, and and to uh, Councilmember Gannon's point, their families and all the people in town. All right. Next item on the agenda is the tentative agenda for October fifth, twenty twenty one council meeting. And does anybody wish to pull anything from the tentative agenda? Very good. Uh, Setting you ready to vote. All in favor? I need a motion. I'll entertain a motion. So move. So, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do I sense you ready to vote over there, Graver? Yes. It's okay. on an island. Uh, he's on an island. Graver Island. That's right. Kathy Graver. That's it. That's it. That's my mom's. All right. Since you're all ready to vote, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passes. Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Doesn't require a vote. We're adjourned.